I'm Bob Duhamel, and today we are going to talk about how to measure resistance. Measuring resistance with an analog meter is a two-step process, so let's talk about that first. Your analog meter looks something like this. We have a gauge, which has a needle, which deflects to the right to give us an indication of either higher current or higher voltage. But with the resistance scale, it runs backwards. So with current or voltage, this would be zero, and this would be a higher, in, uh, a higher quantity. But when it comes to resistance, zero is over here, and infinity is over on this side, and it uses a logarithmic scale. Let me give you an idea of what that means. So we have a scale that looks something like this. Oh, let's see. Right about infinity over here, zero over here, and this might be about 10, and then maybe over about here is 100, and then there 500 right about there, 1,000, 2,000, or whatever, 1K. So it has a scale that is not evenly spaced like the voltage or the current. So voltage and current measures this way. Resistance measures the opposite direction. The reason for that is that the way the ohm meter measures resistance is that it has a battery in it. That's the only reason an analog meter has a battery, except if it has a backlight, which is not really that common. But the battery's in there so that we connect the meter probes across a resistance. There's a resistor. And it runs some current through there and then sees how much current we get. And that gives us an indication of how much resistance it is. And of course, it has different scales to give us different amounts of resistance. So what happens is we start by taking the two leads of the meter. Once we've put them, well, we put them in the meter on the, we have the common for the black. So the black lead goes into the common, and the red lead goes into one that is labeled probably VA omega. Maybe with some dashes in there, it might say volts, ohms, or volts, amps, and ohms, or whatever. But it means that uh, this is where we put the leads to measure either volts, amps or ohms. A lot of meters have a third uh, socket for high current, as we've talked about before, but we're interested in the volts, amps, amps and ohms. So, first thing we do is we short the two leads together. What this does is it runs a current through the leads and causes the needle to deflect to the right, because higher current, it's going to deflect to the right. And then we have an adjuster somewhere on the meter. Might be a thumb wheel, might be a, a regular knob. It'd probably say omega A, D, J. Maybe with a period after it, meaning ohms adjust. So once again, touch the leads together. The needle goes over to the right because now we have a high current going through it. And we adjust this thumb wheel or knob until the needle is over zero. So we put the leads together. That's zero ohms. That causes the needle to deflect. And because of uh, variations in the meter, we have to make an adjustment each time. So needle goes over, adjust the thumb wheel until it's on zero, and now we're ready to measure a resistance. Now we take a resistor, and we put that between the leads, and that needle is going to deflect somewhere. Then we have a knob that adjusts the range. And let's say in our ohms we have uh, times 1, times 10 times 100 and times 1K, somewhere in our ohms range. This is probably a typical analog meter will have these. So what does it mean? Touch the leads together, zero it out, put a resistor in there, just like a digital meter. If you're measuring a very high resistance, be careful about putting your thumbs on it because you'll be measuring your resistance too. But low resistances, it doesn't matter so much. So we put the resistor in there. The needle deflects over to here. Let's say we have it set at the times one range. So that's very straightforward. 10 ohms, 100 ohms, 500, 1K, and infinity. Touch them together, adjust, put the resistor in, goes up to 10. What does that mean? We're on the times one range. One times 10 equals 10 ohms. Now let's put it on another range and see what we get. So now every time you change range, you're going to have to readjust it, touch the leads together, adjust it until it zeroes out. Now we put our resistor in there. And let's say it goes up to 
Uh, let's put a 50 right here because we can, although it's probably although that's probably a little too evenly spaced. Let's move it down here uh, because once again it's a logarithmic scale so we don't have things evenly spaced. So let's say it put the resistor in here and the needle goes up to uh, just before 50. Well it's going to be just something lower than 50 times 10. So 10 times 50 that's 500. So let's so it goes just below 50, that means it's going to be something just under 500 ohms. Once again, we look at the scale times 10. 50 times 10 is 500. The needle goes to something less than 50, so it's just something just less than 500, probably maybe like a 470 ohm uh, resistor would put us right about there. Take another resistor, and it goes in there, and it goes to 100. 100 times 10, that would be 1,000 ohms. So wait a second, why do we have a 1K here? Well, that's 1K if we are on the 1 or the times 1 range. So if we're at the times 1 range and we put our resistor in there and it goes up to here, 1K, well, that's 1,000 times 1, that's 1K. But remember that the meter doesn't read as accurately down here, and especially in the ohms range, our numbers are getting pretty well, pretty well crunched together here. So if I want to be more accurate, if I'm just in the ballpark, okay, it's about 1,000 ohms, good enough. But let's say if I need to be a little more accurate, I might put that in the times 10. Now what's going to happen? 10 times 100 is 1,000. So now, after adjusting it, don't forget, put the leads together, zero it out, put the resistor in there, and now it goes to 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So you have to make sure you're reading the right scale here when you uh, read the resistance. If we put it on the next scale, reading the same 1K resistor. Once again, readjust it, put the leads together, adjust it until it's read zero, put the resistor in there, and now we see that it deflects over to here. 10 times 100 is 1,000. So depending on where we put the scale here, it's going to tell us uh, different readings. We have to work them together. So a 1,000 ohm resistor, if we put it to the times 100, adjust it, it's going to go to 10. 10 times 100 is 1,000. And that's where we're going to get our more accurate readings. So now we look and it goes, oh, it's a little less than 10. Maybe it's not quite 1,000 ohms, where that same resistor might say, yeah, okay, it looks like 1,000 ohms to me. Put it to the times 10 scale, yeah, it looks like 1,000 ohms there, but remember, the meter's not as accurate down here. Put it times 100, say, oh, yeah, something less than 1,000. And of course, if we can read the color band, we can tell exactly what it is, but what's the purpose of an ohm meter? To read unknown resistances. Especially, let's say we suspect that a resistor has gone bad, and we have that 1,000 ohm resistor, and let's say it's a critical resistance, and we see it's something less than 1,000 ohms, maybe it got hot and changed, might go either up or down in resistance, and that would tell you what that is. So remember, if you're reading way up here, if it's not too critical, don't worry about it, but if you're reading a critical resistance, you get more accuracy if you can move the needle over here. How do we move the needle over here? Change the range to a higher multiplication. And then, of course, if we move that to the 1K range, the times 1K, that means that that 1,000 ohms is going to go down way over here to, the, there'll be a little tick marks in here that I didn't draw, down to the first tick mark showing that that's 1,000 ohms. So 1 times 1K to the 1 times 1,000 ohms. So that's how we read that scale compared to that. What's going to happen if I take a 1 meg ohm resistor in there? Well, if I put it times the 1K, what's a million ohms? 1,000 times 1,000. So times 1,000, 1K is 1,000. So think about it. A 1 million ohm resistor, where is it going to read? 1,000 times 1,000. 1 million ohms will put me right there if I'm on my highest multiplier. So this is really not good for measuring accurately very high resistances. So it'll tell me it's a million ohms. <laughs> Got to look carefully. Could that be 2 million? It can be off by a factor of 100% of, of easily at this end of the scale. So it's not going to be accurate for very high resistances because I don't have a scale to bring that down. If I have even higher scales like times 10K, which some more expensive meters might have, then I can bring that over and get a more accurate reading. So once again, we set the scale to where we want it to go, let's say times one. Every time we change the scale, we zero it out, so we touch the leads together, 
adjust this until it reads zero. Then we put our resistance in and we see it goes to 50. What would that be? Times 1, 50 times 1, 50 ohms. So let's go through this exercise with an unknown resistor. First we start by putting it on the times 1 range. This is uh, somewhat backwards from when you're measuring volts or current because normally you want to put it on your highest range for an unknown voltage or current and work your way down so that you don't damage the meter. With the resistance it's the opposite because this is really, remember the meter reads opposite, so this is really the highest range. The times 1 brings our needle over further and so that's going to be the higher range. So we start with the times 1 Put the leads together, adjust it until it reads zero, and now we put the resistor in there, and let's say it goes up to here, somewhere in this range. Well, that's not going to read very accurately, so we want to bring the needle over. How do we bring it over? We kick it up one notch, to times 10. Now we put it in there, and we find it's, oh, maybe over here, about there. So times 10, 100. Uh, that's going to be a little under a thousand ohms, so maybe around 900-ish ohms. But we want to get a more accurate reading. Let's put it to the times 100. Now that brings it over to here to the 9 mark, just below the 10, right up to that mark there that uh, would be 9 ohms, except it's times 100, so that'd be 900 ohms. So there we got a fairly accurate reading with a 900 ohm resistor. So that's how we use an analog meter. Start with your lowest range rather than your highest range because it works backwards from volts and amps. Touch the leads together, zero it out with the leads touched together, put in your resistance, see where you are. If the needle doesn't move much, we need to crank it up to a higher uh, multiplier to bring that needle over. Then once we get it somewhere, let's see the needle comes over here, we're at times 100, and that's going to be, okay, 100 times 50, that's going to be 5,000. So it looks like here would be around maybe 6,000 ohms or something. Now, of course, it's an analog meter, so we're kind of fudging with it. We can't really nail down the numbers, but we can get a pretty good idea of what we're reading. Now, a digital meter is a lot easier to use. First of all, there's no adjustment on digital meters. So we'll take that away. And this is going to be a little differently. Let's, uh, let's just remake that. So we have the range selector here with the ohms range perhaps from here to here starting with 200 and then 2,000. Why not 2K? Uh, like I explained in digital meters, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's to save a decimal point, but that's just the style we do it. Then 20K, 200K, and 2,000K. So those are our ranges. That's a funky looking little K there. Let's fix that up. And up here we have our digital display. So let's uh, put this in the lowest range because that's the way we do it with the ohms range. We always start in the lowest rather than the highest. And do we touch the leads together to zero it out? Nope, there's not even an adjuster on there. We just go ahead and put the resistor in there and see what we get. And we have one and nothing. What does that mean? Whenever we have a one with no trailing digits, that means that we are over range. So what we need to do is move this to the next higher range. So let's move it to the 2000 range, or the, should be the 2K range, but it reads the 2000 range. And now let's see what we have, and we see something like 3, 3, 2. What does that mean? Well, that's straightforward. It's just the number of ohms. So it's 332 ohms. In fact, in the first two ranges, it's, I'm going to get this out of the way here, that is the ohms range, but the first two of these, you're just reading direct ohms. They don't label it. Why don't they just label it direct ohms? I don't know, but that will just be direct ohms, 332 ohms. If we had, had read something here like 33.2, it would have been 33.2 ohms. So in the first two ranges, it's just straightforward, number of ohms. Okay, so uh, a 332 ohm resistor, well, it's probably a 33 ohm resistor, and because of the tolerance, it's not quite perfect, but there we have it. Could have been 32.9, who knows what, but there's a 33 ohm resistor. Okay, let's measure another one. Put the resistor in here, and we see, again, over range. So let's move this to the next range up, which will be the 20K range. And so now we see something like 
4.72. Of course, I'm making these up as I go along, but I'm trying to be something uh, realistic. So in the 20K range, in the 2K range, that would have been too high. It's uh, 4K. So we go to the 20K range, and once again, we read it straight forward, but now we're reading K. So in these two ranges, we read kilo ohms. Why don't they label it that way? I don't know, but the first two ranges we're reading straight ohms, next two ranges we're reading kilo ohms, so it's 4.72 K. If we put another resistor in here, boom, and we get another over range, one with no trailing zeros, so let's move this up to the 200K range. And we end up with something like 97.1. Well, once again, we're just reading straight K, so that's going to be 97K. So it's greater than 20K, so it overranged on the 20K range. But we put to the 200K range, and now we get a decimal point here, and so it reads straight kilo ohms. Now let's try another one. Put the resistor in here, and once again, we get an overrange. So what do we do? We move this up to the next range, which is the 2000K range. Why doesn't that say 2 meg? That's just the way they do it. So let's say we put it up there, and now we read something like, I'm going to just make this straightforward just to avoid confusion. Uh, 1000 zero, zero, zero. reads 1000. So what is that? It's the 2000 max. It's reading 1000. And that extends this actually over into here. Kind of jumped the gun there. All of these are reading in kilo ohms. So 1000 kilo ohms is 1 mega ohm. So 2000 kilo ohms, the highest possible reading actually would be 1999, but we know how that works. So 1999 would be 1999K, which is actually 2 mega ohms. 1,000 would be 1,000K, which is actually 1 megohm. And of course, it would read something a little different, maybe 1, 0, you know, 1, 5, because it's not going to be perfect. So if we take a 1 meg resistor, what do we expect? Roughly 1,000 kilo ohms. So in the 2,000K range, that's what we get. So these are reading straight ohms, these are reading kilo ohms, and they just simply don't Put a decimal point there. So if they made this a 2 meg range, they'd have to simply put a decimal point there, and for some reason they seem not to want to do that. So you just have to remember, okay, I'm reading thousands of ohms. 1015K is basically, what is that? 1015,000. So it's 1,015,000 ohms, or 1.015 meg ohms. So that's how we read a digital meter. Just remember the first two ranges are just reading straight ohms. All the rest of the ranges are reading K. And of course, 1000 K is one meg. So our meg ohm ranges are in the thousands of kilo ohms. And why they do that? Don't know, just saving a decimal point there as best I can guess. So that's how we read a digital meter. It's pretty straightforward. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.